when will be IPv6 uh, in uh, the real world? Right, so there are many dates when things are going to happen. The first date is actually quite soon now, in about three months, in March 2011, the big pool, the pool at IANA, the central pool for the entire world, gives away its last network block in V4. At that point, the supplies from the central pool dry up. After that, each of the five regional registries are running from what they have. Now, the world is growing quickly. Everyone's got an iPhone these days, and they all need addresses. We're going to run out over the next 12 months to 18 months for most of the world. The first one to actually run out is going to be in the Asia-Pacific region, where we expect APNIC to give away its last address in September. Not long after that, here in Europe, we're going to see in early 2012, which is just a little over 12 months from now, the RIPE NCC hand out its last block. Now, a lot of ISPs are going to say, well, that's okay, I have many addresses, I don't have a problem. But when you buy that next iPhone and you wait for a year, what address is going to be on that machine? All of a sudden, the fastest growing part of the internet, which is actually the mobile network, are the folk that are going to run out first. And they're going to have to use V6 almost immediately. Now, at that point, everyone else has to catch up. Because if the most fashionable part of the internet, the one over the wire, the one that everyone has in their pockets, starts to go V6 only, then all of a sudden all the other services need to come up the same way. So this next year is really the last year where V4 is going to be everywhere. The year after that, no, totally different. What would be the scenario after the day one of the end of IPv4 addresses? Two different internet, one for IPv4 and one for IPv6. Illegal market of IPv6 address, something of that. We've thought a lot about this and it's beyond technology. It's actually all about economics. We get through around 200 million IPv4 addresses every year. That's a huge amount of addresses. And when the supply stops, we certainly think that there'll be folk who'll still want addresses. And money will come into play. And it's likely there'll be a small market for v4 addresses. But even a market can't generate 200 million new addresses every year. So a market might last for a year or two. But at some point, it's so scarce and the price gets so high that we can't afford to run IPv4 for new services. Now, there are a number of similar studies now about what then drives this. And we have to look at the economics of so-called tipping points. About a century ago, we didn't have cars. We all used horses and used our feet. And then the rich people got cars, but no one else. And at some point, it reached a tipping point where cars were essential. And it happened not that long ago, but essential. We think with V6 that we can't run dual stack forever. Because with dual stack, you still need V4 addresses. Dual stack is temporary. At some point, the network itself tips into V6. And then everyone is then desperately trying to figure out what to do next. Because all those servers, all those old systems, all those things in the back room you never updated, you're going to have to do something about that. And by doing something, you've actually got to do V6 if you want it to continue to be on the network. So in about three years or so from now, about 2013, I think we'll see a tipping point with V6. And all of a sudden, everyone needs to follow where the market lead has been created. And the economics of the tipping point suggest that when it goes to V6, it goes very quickly.